Heenan maybe may be onto it. But the Blackhawks, yeah, he's onto it all right. The Blackhawks start so fast here. You've got to stall. You've got to take the rhythm away from R. Graham given a shot by Gord Murphy. It came back over to Ricci. Behind a tuck, it has Eklund in front. Trying to stop it in, score! Ricci on the power play, and it is two to one in favor of the Flyers. And sure enough, he's coming off. And he's not a happy camper. He tried to break his stick on the ice. See him look up at Keenan. He's talking to Mike Keenan. He's not yelling at anybody else. Now he's going out with him. Keenan's standing right there talking to him. There he is. Oh, watch this. Watch this. Hey. Now watch this. It ain't over yet. Look at this. Yikes. Keenan was just, he was mean. He was mean spirited. He almost was doing it out of pleasure to belittle people and to, uh, to, to make trades that were just asinine, uh, little things like that. He'd come in the room and the only guy I'd ever seen do this was after a morning skate, he'd come in and tell the trainers to, to move guys from one area in the dressing room to another area in the dressing room. And it's just like, why? You know, and uh, he, he didn't treat the trainers well. He didn't treat anyone well. And, uh, you know, our relationship now is only because, uh, you know, I'm just not a grudge holder. And uh, uh, we're in the same circles a lot, and I certainly don't want, uh, you know, those situations to be uncomfortable. Uh, but, you know, I will never forgive him for what he did while he was here and what he did to this organization. just kind of pretty much was fed up. He starts screaming at the players that they're no good and they're not going anywhere and this team isn't anywhere close to a cup. He stops coaching on the bench. He says, if you're not going to play, I'm not going to coach. 
I remember him just saying, excuse me, excuse me. Does anybody want to play here tonight? Anybody want to play? He pretty much threw it out at our skates and said, hey, you guys aren't playing? Well, you know what? Then I'm not going to coach. I mean, we pretty much changed our lines ourselves, and I had never seen a coach really do that. Uh, you know, yeah, people, they're, they're a hockey team, but they're named after a Disney movie. I, you know, this was about all that Mike Keenan could abide. Um, and so he threw a temper tantrum on the ice. I remember him looking at me, he's like, what happened to Brian Leach? We, was Leach hurt? Yeah, it went, well, we had a view. Where, we had where a, was Leach? Yeah, we had a I'm, view. I'm looking on a bench. I don't, we have a perfect view. So where's Leach? Where's Leach? And I'm saying, yeah, Leach is buried Leach is buried next to the back of both. He ain't he's playing saying, anywhere. Keenan put him in the doghouse. I'm like, well, how could this how be? How could you put Brian Leach there? And I says, play you on the ice. Mike Keenan benched Brian Leach. Brian Leach and Jay Wells. I think he just had free license prior to my arrival in certain aspects of the game. I wanted to alter those, those instincts in his decision making about supporting the puck a little bit differently than he had. And, and I tried to verbalize it with him for an, a few games and a number of occasions. So finally I decided to bench him. And I benched him in New York and, and uh, asked him to respond when he felt he could embrace what we were trying to accomplish. And he was very stubborn and sat there for the most part of a game. In my mind, I was doing all I could uh, that Mike was asking, but it still couldn't really get to the level that he was looking for or that he was comfortable with. Uh, it wasn't a good feeling for me, but, you know, that was something that bothered me um, all year long, no question. And I'm losing this one. Mike Keenan's going to have to really sit down with Neil Smith and figure out exactly what's going on. This is very tough to accept. I mean, I remember that like it was yesterday. Keenan came in and pretty much verbatim said, Brian Leach, Brian Blank and Leach, Chris Chelios is way better than you are. I would trade him right now for you. This organization has you rated way too high. But I was friends with Chelly, and we would talk, and he'd be like, what's going on in New York? And I'd be like, what do you mean? What's Iron Mike up to? And he goes, I heard we're being traded for each other. That was the MO for Mike Keenan, trying to push the buttons to get the most out of a player. And uh, he knew that in order for the Rangers to be successful, he had to have Brian Leach playing at the highest level uh, that he could play. Well, the practice after was uh, a, a, an exclamation mark in terms of where we were at, in terms of our development and, and moving a program forward. We had a hard battle practice. We had to go up and down at least 45 or 50 times. I mean, it was one of those skates where uh, you know, you had, uh, you felt like your legs were baggage claim for, uh, for, for 10 days. Yeah, I was very demonstrative in my approach to the practice. I physically pushed them. Uh, I remember breaking a stick over the goal. I'm sure it was a little scary for them to come in and this coach is demanding that not only are we going to make the playoffs, we're going to win the cup. So that's a, that's a big jump. It was us against him mentality, and I really think that once we understood that, uh, I mean, we took off, but I really think that that 24-hour stretch of losing Anaheim and that bag skate the next day, uh, I thought was the turning point for us. Mike Keenan suggested after the game that Linden was playing at a 50% level. The comments were public, and they weren't warmly received by the longest-serving Canuck. Well, I think that, uh, you know, our team's losing, and... and uh, you know, obviously he's frustrated, and I think when you get frustrated, you start to point fingers, and, uh, you know, I'm not, don't believe in that, uh, especially from a public standpoint, but, um, you know, that's uh, how he chooses to uh, do his business. It's not that I haven't had discussions with Trevor in, in privacy and behind closed doors and so on, and uh, the game, unfortunately, is public, and there was 18,000-plus fans here last game, and uh, probably millions of people watching the game across Canada. And for that reason, sometimes it's difficult for, for us to hide. You know, I, I realize that uh, he wants me to be better. He made that clear after the game, and, uh, you know, I'm prepared to do that. 
Linden's production certainly isn't what it once was. Since the start of last season, he has just 16 goals in 81 games. Yes, he has been injured for chunks of the past two seasons, but when healthy, he doesn't seem to have the on-ice presence he once had. It's about respect for your teammates. You Once you put that uniform on and you're out there, this is a team game. You have responsibility to those teammates to play as hard as you can. Whether you like the coach or don't like the coach, whether the, you like the program or don't like the program, and, and uh, whether it's uh, Keenan, Rennie, Quinn, Lee, Jones, Pat Riley, or Scotty Bowman, it's what you have as responsibility to each other. I never think it's time for me to move on. Obviously, um, times change and circumstances change. And, uh, you know, I've said before, if um, this team can better itself by moving me, I'm sure they'll do it. One of the first Russian players to win the cup. Uh, what was that experience like? Uh, well, of course, it was great. Um, it's not. A, it, it, it wasn't reason that we went, that we were first four Russian players to win the Stanley Cup. It was. Um, we had a great team at, uh, in '94, and uh, as the guy said before, we came together right at, a, at the right time. And. Um, of course, it was special. I remember when Mike called us, uh, four of us, I think Mike before game seven, yeah, or game six, <laughs> he called us in your uh, coaching room and start to telling us that uh, you Russians, you don't need about the Stanley Cup, you don't worry about this cup, you only think about Olympics and championships. <laughs> 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 we, were, we, were, we were standing, four of us, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, of course. After a lethargic game one tie against Czechoslovakia in Calgary, he imposed a very unpopular curfew. They thought they were going to, again, uh, take off with their gang and have a fun time, and I made them get on the bus. Yeah, it raised a few eyebrows when that happened, but everybody was so was focused on the big picture. But yeah, there was there was bumps along the road, that was for sure, and that and that was that could be the first one. I don't know if it was near revolt, but it was um, th there were issues there. That was what Mike's to me. That was always Mike's uh, um, one of his strong points uh, that uh, that he did well. He he tried to galvanize, and he would do things to galvanize the group together. Whether it was to be if they. If we were all mad at him, at least we were collectively we were all mad at him. And he didn't mind that because he felt that it, was, it, would, it would bring us closer. Resentment over Keenan's ongoing hardline tactics boiled over to the point the players decided to do something about it when the team arrived in Montreal six days later. When we had the, the session, the practice session, or preparation sessions, I wanted their, their best abilities and their full attention. And, and once I explained that to them, uh, they were great. They were, they were uh, Gretzky, Messi, and 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 uh, Bork. You probably know the story. Uh, came to see me after they were a little bit disgruntled about the amount of work we were doing. And after that was explained, it was very simply put to them. It lasted about three or four minutes of conversation. Wayne stood up, said, "I'm sorry, we're here. It won't happen again. There will be never an issue on this team again. I'll see you tomorrow at practice." I said, "Great." When Mike Keenan, the head coach, asked you the difference between him and Al Arbor, what did you say? So I'll, I'll set the table first. And it was December 23rd. We played in Washington. We won one nothing, And we had all these bonuses for if you scored a power play goal, if you had a shutout, if you won so many games in a five-game segment, you would hit the mother load of all kinds of cash. Right? And we paid tax on that, by the way, for the IRS. We paid tax. <laughs> um, yes, but, we did. Yeah, uh, but that game won nothing. Like, this is hallelujah. This is great. Then it, it, it got to the day after Christmas, the 26th, we played New Jersey. And uh, the reporters asked me, are you going to play that game? I mean, you had a great game in Washington. Shut out. Are you going to play? I said, I don't know. Like, you think... Mike's going to tell me, I mean, like if it's Al Arbor, I'd know what Al was, would do. Oh my gosh. But, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know what Mike will do. And the headline in the New York Post on the 26th when I got to the rink was, Keenan, no Al Arbor. 
So I'm riding the bike, and you were too. And Dick Todd comes in and says, yeah, Mike wants to see you. Okay, I know what this is about. So I walk into the room, and he says, he's got his feet up on the desk, as he normally did. He said, all right, Mr. Know It All, sit down. Now, I know it's not going well right from the start. That first sentence doesn't tell you we're going to be funny and friendly and fuzzy. What's the difference between me and Al Arbor? I was deflecting. I'm like, Al, I don't write the headlines. I didn't mean it. Oh, no, no. Keenan says, go ahead, Mr. Hockey. Gordy, you tell me the difference between me and Al Arbor. Well, you're taking it all wrong, Mike. No, 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 Mr. No, it all. Mr., you know everything, right? So I figured, okay, I had enough of this shit. So I told him the difference between you and Al Arbor. How about like six Stanley Cups? Uh oh. That was it. Threw me out. Like there was <laughs> objects coming at me. And then I played that night. We won 7 2 against the Devils. And I don't think I saw the ice for a month. I just hung out with you. So. И он готов драться и сражаться за свою команду. Наверняка будет какое-то разбирательство и наверняка будут санкции к Кинену. I'm not sure what we're going to look at here, but apparently during the photo shoot something happened that was uh, rather interesting. He hooked you both again. <laughs> yeah, that was. Uh... Well, that's Mike. Weiss's shift was created out of circumstance. Unlike Alex Kovalev on February 23, 1994, during a game against the Bruins, Kovalev overextended a shift beyond head coach Mike Keenan's allowed limit, having been on the ice for a total of a minute and five seconds. Keenan waved him back into the play. So he was overextending his shift. I told the team when he comes over, I'm going to tell him to stay out. He comes over, tell him to stay out. Now they're starting to chime in. I said, now when he puts his foot up to climb into the box, push him back, which they did. Make sure you keep your, your uh, hand in the bolt. He can't come off. And now they're giggling because the shift's extending. Kovalev threw two penalties, and then this happened. Shot by Kovalev, he scores! But Mike Keenan kept him on to finish the period. When the horn sounded to end the second, Kovalev finally left the ice. I would say it was probably 10 minutes. <laughs> he thought I loved him at the, at, at the yeah. beginning of it. He said, this coach is great. He loves me. He's keeping me out. At the end of it, he's dying. So, oh, my God, get me off here. Mike Keenan. I'd particularly like to thank Bob Clark for his courage in hiring me and giving me an opportunity to coach the National Hockey League, the organization for their great support, and for our players for a certain level of excellence that they strive for all year. But I'd also like to share this award tonight with our coaching staff, E.J. McGuire, Ted Sater, Pat Croce, and Bernie Perrant. When I picked that cup from him, it was like a feather. Just lifted it up in complete joy.